Biggest inspiration of my life is my brother Michael. No one has taught me more on how to have a positive attitude during adverse times more than he has. No one has taught me more on how important it is to enjoy yourself during the rebuilding process when a major change takes place in your life more than he has. He's 100% disabled as a result of the Vietnam War. He's the only man in medical history that ever survived that kind of wound. He's in medical journals, he's in books as someone who beat the odds. 21 feet of his small intestine were either taken out or blown out on the battlefield. His kidneys were damaged and other internal organs. And the only reason why I'm being graphic here is that I want you to understand what he went through so you can appreciate how he beat this. I'll never forget the first time that I saw him in St. Albans Naval Hospital in Queens, New York. If it hadn't have been for my mom and dad in the room with him, I never would have known it was him. He went from 168 pounds to 88 pounds. In the room with my mom and dad, were his two friends from high school and his Marine Corps buddy whom he had gotten wounded with. And the whole day my brother was going in and out of consciousness. It was at the end of the day when the doctors came in and told my mom and dad the bad news and said, I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like he's going to make it, not even through the night. I'll never forget the look on my mom and dad's face. His two friends from high school walked out of the room. His Marine Corps buddy was hitting the wall saying, why? As all, as all this was going on, I remember, as if it were yesterday, I remember looking at my brother, wondering if it's going to be the last time that I'm going to see him. I was only 17 years old at the time, and I'm noticing something very strange is happening. His hand is slowly starting to rise from his side. Now, he's supposed to be unconscious, and I'm knowing he's trying to do something. And he brings it up here, and he clenched his fist, and up came his middle finger. And I knew he was going to try and make it right there. And I told everyone, look, look, because that was the answer he gave to the doctor's diagnosis. That was the answer he gave them every single time they told him that he couldn't and wouldn't be able to do something. First, they said he wouldn't live long. Well, they're wrong because he's alive today. Then they said that he would have to eat certain foods like liquids and baby food and, and, and fruits and vegetables because they didn't think his body would be able to sustain anything of any substance at all. You want to know what my brother's attitude was? Is, hey, don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta and a couple of meatballs, even if I have to sit on the toilet while I'm eating it. <laughs> and you laugh, you want to know, he lived long enough where his small intestines stretched a bit and he was able to compensate and use the rest of his digestive system for what his small intestine could no longer do. To this day, doctors look at him and they say, oh man, you know, here comes the miracle man when he goes for checkups. They look at that's what they call him, but here's the point. I believe we all have opportunities to perform our own miracles when life is throwing something at us, whether it's with your business or at home, your personal life, it doesn't matter. We all have opportunities to perform our own miracles. A miracle is just a shift in perception on how you view the challenge. And it's a matter of what you believe. My brother incorporated a belief system that was incredible. First of all, he never said, why me? Which is what we have a tendency to do. If you're, if you're with your business right now and you're having a tough time, isn't that something that you say to yourself every now and then? Why is this happening? Why me? As Soon as you say that, you're opening up the door to the negative zone. And you're, you're leaving room for more crap to come in. My brother never said, why me? He said, this is me. This is what happened. This is what I have to deal with. What do I have to do to turn this around? Who can I go to that can help me? He made a conscious choice to enjoy himself during the rebuilding process and to find and to surround himself with people who could make him laugh. This is what really separated him from everyone else that was in that hospital. I'm not passing judgment. I know these guys had their own pain to deal with, but honestly, my new book, which I'll be selling at the end of the program, Get Your Shift Together, is based on the strategies that my brother used to turn his life around. And one of them was to make that choice to enjoy himself and to find the laughter. These other guys were saying, how can I enjoy myself the way I am? How can I laugh the way I am? Or I'll enjoy myself and I'll laugh if and when I get better. My brother said, no, I'm going to find the laughter now and I'm going to make a choice to enjoy myself. As a result, it helped him to get better. You see the difference in the mindset? To make a long story short, he was in the hospital for close to a year. When he got out, he was 95 pounds. He said he was gonna to go to college. And we didn't think he'd be able to do it because he wasn't Mr. Whiz Kid in high school. He had to go to college at night to prove himself, they said. He got straight A's, they let him go full time. He graduated with degrees in psychology. 
administration, history. He went back to the same school that he graduated from and he became a history teacher. From there he became an attendance officer. From there he became assistant principal. From there he became principal. And when he went to retire, they wouldn't let him retire. They made him superintendent of the entire school system. Now you're looking at me now and you're saying, gee, Steve, that's a great story, but what does that have to do with us? Not nothing, I just had some time to kill and I thought maybe you want <laughs> It has everything to do with you. Because the moral of this story, folks, it's not what happens to you that determines how successful or how happy you're going to be. It's what you do about what happens. It's the choices you make is what makes the difference. It's the thoughts that you have about the challenge that will formulate the beliefs that you have about the challenge and will formulate the attitude you have about the challenge that will make, make the difference. Will you challenge yourself to find the laughter in between the tough times and will you dare to make a choice right now to say you're gonna enjoy yourself during the process, regardless of how challenging it may be? If you do these simple strategies, these common sense success strategies, they will eventually become a part of who you are. They will become a habit. I promise you, life will become easier.